Buckminster Fuller was one of the most original, controversial, inventive visionaries of the 21st century. He was sort of a transdisciplinary visionary. Um, he was often referred to as the Leonardo da Vinci of the 21st century. Bucky had several very important formative experiences in the early part of his life, and I would say that, that um, you know, an early epiphany, if you will, happened when he was a really young boy, three, four years old. He was born ext with extreme farsightedness. He was almost blind as a young kid and didn't have glasses until he was four years old. So, you know, his early childhood was just sort of this magic. <laughs> he lived in his own um, sort of spherical world of um, patterns. And when he was in nursery school, um, he was asked, as the other children were asked, to construct a, a building out of toothpicks and peas. He had never se actually seen a building. He didn't understand that they were square, but he, primarily, but he understood that they must be solid because I live in a house and, and we are in a building, my school. So he just intuitively made a triangle, and from there he made a tetrahedron, which is the most fundamental, solid, most stable structure in the universe. And he understood right then that, oh, it's the triangle, not the square, that is a, a fundamentally stable structure. Bucky was adamant about defying categorization, and he created for himself his own description of how he operated, and that was as a comprehensive, anticipatory design scientist. And he felt very, very strongly that we need more and more people who are able to look at what they're doing within the context of a kind of holistic worldview in order to make good design decisions. He understood from a very early time that you can only make accurate predictions and for him make an accurate and enduringly sustainable solution if you understand the biggest context possible for the site which you want to intervene into. And that has to do with information and data collection and visualizing data and he was very early, at, at a very early stage he was really um, uh, he really understood intuitively how important that was. I think an important part of his practice and which separated him from um, pure philosophy, pure metaphysics, pure mathematical speculation was that he had a discipline to render to artifact. So he had to prove to himself in the three-dimensional physical world that these metaphysical concepts were possible. And that, that it really drove um, his, his thinking and his uh, sort of maniacal production um, throughout his, his lifetime. He, he was, uh, he was um, just incredibly prolific. He has been a, 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 a big influence on educators to um, uh, design curriculum, especially for young kids, that was that is much more holistic in its orientation. He's had a huge influence in the whole green building, built environment, um, advanced structural systems world of engineers, architects, urban planners, the computer technology world, information technology world um, sees Bucky as a as a singular icon, he because of his orientation in systems thinking, um, I don't think that there's a systems a systems innovator of the last 50 years who was not influenced in some way by Bucky. His influence is so far and so wide; it's hard to even put a finger on it. Um, and in some ways, we're beginning to live in in the Dymaxion world that Bucky envisioned. I'm Elizabeth Thompson, the executive director of the Buckminster Fuller Institute. You're watching Thinker.